All right, hey, shalom, akiyam, shalom. As always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. All right, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us the truth, and peace and salutations go out to the elect that are scattered by the four winds of the earth, and that are in the hopes of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, showing mercy upon us during the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. Now, what you just heard me say in the beginning, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo-Hebrew. Okay. And according to prophecy, pursuant to the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, the Heavenly Father told us that He would bring back unto the nation of Israel, all right, you so-called Negroes, Latino, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true nation of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a, uh, a pure language, okay? Where we would be calling upon the Heavenly Father's name in one consent. And that prophecy has come to fruition in this generation where we're living in, where the Heavenly Father has finally brought back His breath into the spirits of His elect, and they're fulfilling Zephaniah, the third chapter, okay? The name Yahweh. All right, is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah, which the name Yahweh means He is or He to be, or the existing one. Ba Hashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, okay? Who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua, which the name Yahweh Shai means He delivers or the deliverer, all right? And real quick, I want to um, speak about, um, I'm not too sure why I'm going to entitle the lesson. It's going to be around the lines of taking care of your temple, okay? And pretty much um, the Spirit jumped on me to make light of this based off, you know, as a brother that works in the fast food joint, these people have no consideration or lack the discipline of taking care of their body, man, all right? In a society that pushes breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's completely off, man. Like it says in Jeremiah 6 and 16, to search, to seek for the old paths, okay? And something that we used to do in the ancient days was eat once a day, all right? Eating only one meal, and then that's it, all right? But in this system that the so-called white man has set up, which are the biblical Edomites, they push an agenda of eating a healthy breakfast that consists of, um, you know, bacon, eggs, so much and so forth. That's completely off, man. When you go into the breakdown of the word breakfast, matter of fact, I got it pulled up if I'm not mistaken. Yep. It comes from the root word break, all right? And it says to divide solid matter violently into parts of fragments, okay? And that's ultimately what you do when you're asleep, okay? When you're sleeping, your body is breaking down the food that you digested, okay? So it's still trying to wake up when you first, you know, open your eyes and the Heavenly Father gives you, you know, the blessing to live another day, okay? Your body is still um, breaking down the foods that you ate last night, okay? And when you go to the word uh, fast, for the suffix, it says act of fasting, okay? Voluntary abstinence from food and drink or from certain kinds of food, okay? So that's what the word breakfast truly means, okay? When you wake up, your real breakfast only consists of water, okay? Of course, you know, you may throw in a couple pieces of fruit, some uh, apple, strawberries, berries, so much and so forth, okay? But the main thing that you must be consuming during that span of four hours is nothing but liquids, man, so that your bowels and your stomach can wake up and take something that can be easily digested, okay? When you drink a bottle of water that consists of, what, 500 milliliters, your body flushes that out in the first hour, okay? So that's another thing to take into account, Akiyam. When you first wake up, one of the main things that you want to abstain from is everything, okay? The only thing that you should be ingesting is water and some fruits, okay? 
And, um, you know, like I was making the point, a lot of these people do not take care of their temple. All right. And it shows a lot of these so-called Americans, they're completely out of shape. All right. When you compare an American to Europe, Mexico, Italy, you can see the difference in their bodies. It's not even that, you know, it's blatant, man. How different of a lifestyle these people in America live compared to other nations, okay? In a world where, matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. In the book of, um, well, first off, we're going to get Ezekiel 4 and 13. All right, it says, And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread amongst the Gentiles, whither I will drive them, okay? And this prophecy has mostly taken place here in Babylon the Great in America, okay? Of course, you have brothers scattered throughout the four winds of the earth, but if you want to get some sort of, you know, provision that actually does its duty and is beneficial for your body, you have to have some bread, okay? And Jake is not in the condition to buy foods that don't have as many chemicals inside them, okay? If you want some actual water that isn't polluted with, um, I don't know, potassium bicarbonate, magnesium chloride, calcium, you know, all that bullshit, you got to go to Esau's stores, man. And it's going to cost you some for just some water, okay? But, um, damn, I completely forgot what scripture I was thinking of, Salakia. Um, matter of fact, Salakia, let's go to the book of Sirach. 30th chapter okay and the main point that i want to touch up on this topic is because these foods that a lot of these americans get in these fast food joints in your local grocery store they're littered with nothing but drugs and chemicals okay if you get up right now and you you know check the back of your cereal box it's going to be nothing but a, a damn essay with four paragraphs on it man with nothing but a bunch of words that you can't even pronounce and you have no idea of what they mean okay and of course you know like i made the point we're jake all right we don't have the best financial status in this society but you know set your priorities straight all right spend those you know extra two bucks to get something that isn't fully polluted with nothing but drugs, man. Because when the time of famine hits, a lot of these people are going to be having withdrawals, okay? And the main people that are going to be facing it are Jake's, man. They do nothing but eat foods that are just littered with preservatives, chemicals, and so much and so forth, okay? That's the point that I want to make because when the lack of bread comes pursuing to second measures, the 15th, matter of fact, Let's grab that real quick. Second edge is 15, around the 19th verse, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 19. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. Why? Because the <clears throat> excuse me, because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay? And like I said, a lot of these foods are nothing but littered with drugs, okay, in order for some sort of brand to get their food, you know, put on the shelves, they got to go through the FDA, okay, the Federal Drug, I'm sorry, the Food Drug Administration, all right, which was taking place during the 1900s, where because of how hideous, all right, meat processors and the other um, systems that produce foods, because of how disgusting the conditions were, Esau orchestrated the system where they pretty much, you know, have it locked down to make people think that your food, don't even worry, okay? It's going to benefit you. It's not going to be littered, you know, this, that, and third, you know, speaking those smooth words, all right? But guess what? War was in his heart. And that's ultimately what Esau is orchestrating right now, Okay? Through this food, he's spiritually getting a war prepared for these people, man. Once that lack of bread happens, 
these people are going to be fiending for that donut, okay? They're going to be fiending for, you know, this, that, and the third, man. So when, you know, that lack of bread comes, us brothers that have the understanding of the of Satan's devices, we're not going to, you know, have those withdraw withdrawals to the extent that these other people are going to be having, all right? And on top of that, you know, us brothers, we're... Um, we're conditioned to fasting, okay? And that's something that even myself, I got to exercise more, fasting. Fasting is a... It's a power, really, that the Heavenly Father has granted us so that we can come closer unto Him and ultimately fight off the demons that we deal with, okay? Let's grab a couple of scriptures regarding just fasting. Matter of fact, let's grab this one real quick. This is Matthew chapter 17, verse... Um, matter of fact, let me start at the 17th verse, okay? This is when Yahawashai was, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was helping someone that had, a, that had Satan on him, okay? But the disciples couldn't cure him. Why? Well, let's read. Let's start up a little. Starting at the 14th verse, uh, Salaki. Yep, 14. It says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And they brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And this is the point. The disciples weren't able to heal the man. Why? Because they weren't that connected with the Heavenly Father, okay? In order to be connected, well, Salaki, Yahawashai is going to later say, <clears throat> speak on it. Then Yahawashai answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahawashai rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yahawashai apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And this is the point. And Yahawashai said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Okay? Verse 21. How be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting, okay? And ultimately, the reason why the, the disciples weren't able to cast out Satan out of the, the man's son for making him into a lunatic was because they were on a low vibration of faith, okay? And something that really sets you to the next level, so to speak, is fasting, okay? When you fast and you go about doing your day-to-day -day things, it's a lot, it's a, it's a strenuous action that you have to do, okay? That makes you lean upon the Heavenly Father, man. When you're going through your fast, pray unto the Most High and, you know, ask Him to give you that strength that you need, okay? That's one of the components that He's provided unto us to get more attached to Him, all right? And to start exercising that relationship that we have with them okay of course fasting is also beneficial to the temple all right not only does it slim you down but it helps you fight off diseases that you may be catching okay dr sebi you know who is well known amongst the uh, the churches he always goes into how fasting is very beneficial for the body okay all you got to do to look up for the benefits is go to TikTok, look up Dr. Sebi fasting, and you'll get a bunch of videos that elaborate on that, okay? But just bringing forth the point that fasting is something that we got to continue to exercise. And like I said, that goes first and foremost directly to myself. But now let's go to the book of Sirach, the 30th chapter. Starting at the 14th verse. Matter of fact, the 
let's grab this in the GNT. Just to, um, you know, bring forth the point of how beneficial fasting is to the body and, you know, how the temple is something that has to be taken care of. All right. Like the saying is in the world, you are what you eat. If you put in bullshit, well, you're going to put out nothing but BS. Um, Shrock 30 and 14. <clears throat> Read full chunk. Shrock four, 30 verse 14. And, you know, like the little title says, health. Okay. It is better to be poor, but strong and healthy than to be rich, but in poor health. Okay. And that, you know, that cuts it straight through having a, a healthy temple. Not only does that boost your confidence, but it helps you to, to be more in tune with the scriptures. Okay. Because, and this is something that I picked up. You know, when I was in the world and reflecting back on it in the truth, when you're always consuming something, you're not really too in tune with what's going on in your surroundings. OK, your body more so is focusing on breaking down everything that you've consumed. OK. And like the beloved apostle Tahar says, your your stomach is like your second mind. OK, you always got to, you know. If you're hungry, your stomach, your stomach tells you whether or not you're hungry. OK, your stomach tells you whether or not you've had enough. Verse six, I'm sorry, verse 15, a sound, healthy body and a cheerful attitude are more valuable than gold and jewels. And that's what you obtain from being temperate in what you eat, abstaining from dainties and so much and so forth. All right. Like I said, you're more confident. And you're able to bring forth the will of the Heavenly Father easier, okay? Allowing the Spirit to do what it wants and not having the flesh corrupt what the Spirit yearns for, all right? Verse 16, nothing can make you richer or give you greater happiness than those two things. It would be better to be dead asleep forever than to live in the misery of chronic illness, okay? And that's also why we have the dietary laws pursuant to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. OK, a lot of these people disannul the fact that we can't eat pork. We can't eat, you know, this, that, the third. All right. The Heavenly Father always, the you know, the law, statutes and commandments weren't just created for, you know, because the Heavenly Father wanted. No, they serve their purposes. OK. Pigs do nothing but spread diseases. And if you eat one, well, guess what? All those different, you know, elements that they've been eating, doo-doo, you know, if there's a dead pig in the midst of them, they're going to be going ham on that. So you're not only eating doo-doo, you're eating an um, animal that has been dead for God knows who lo how long, but you're eating nothing but a bunch of BS, man. And that's just one animal, Okay. Jake loves shrimp. They love all those, you know, infestations that live at the bottom of the sea. All right. There's a reason why they're at the bottom. OK. Verse 18, it says the finest food means nothing if you are too sick to eat it. It might as well be offered to an idol. And that's a beautiful point as well, because, um, you know, let's say you're a brother that's, you know, a little heavy, a little heavier on the Slakia, a little heavier. OK. If you want to start, you know, slimming down, something that you have to consider is that you got to, you know, change your diet. OK. And that doesn't mean eating nothing but vegetables. You got to slowly but surely change your diet, because if you start, you know, eating nothing but a bunch of fruit, you're body that has been infested with nothing but fat it's rich in nothing but oils those oils and the fat is gonna ultimately overcome 
the nutrients that those beneficial foods have and they're not going to serve their properties okay that's why you know going back to fasting fasting is a crucial point in trying to lose weight okay so that's um con that's the point that i wanted here now we're going to jump to the 37th chapter and go yep the 27th verse and like it says controlling the appetite okay it says my child verse 27 as you go through life keep your appetite under control and don't eat anything that you know is bad for you all right pursuing to the dietary laws we can't eat you know it lists in leviticus 11th chapter all the abominations that we can't consume okay and of course you can also reference that to the foods that you eat on your shelves that may be kosher okay always look back at that label and if it has a big ass paragraph of things that you can't even pronounce put it back okay put that thing back man verse 28 all food doesn't agree with everyone and everyone doesn't like the same kind of kinds of food don't feel that you just have to have all sorts of fancy food and don't be a glutton over any food, all right? And like I said earlier, Jake, we don't have the financial status that we we need to eat healthy, okay? We can't get all these exotic fruits that these Edomites eat on a daily basis, like dragon fruit, which is very beneficial for the body. Um, what are some other ones? mangoes papaya but like i said do your um make some sacrifices you know instead of buying some clothes put that money to helping out your body okay instead of buying you know you can you know whatever things that you use you know put that as the variable and switch up your priorities okay because like i said in the time of jacob's trouble when the lack of bread is throughout all Babylon, you don't want to be the one that is, you know, yearning for some of those chemicals, okay? Verse what we look, verse 30, it says, If you eat too much, you'll get sick. If you do it all the time, you'll always have stomach trouble, all right? And like I said, this um, system that E has pushed breakfast, lunch, and dinner is a fulfillment of that scripture, man. Once again, matter of fact, let's grab that. Jeremiah 6 and 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Okay? And like we read in Surah uh, 30, okay, if you eat in moderation, that's where you're going to have sound sleep, okay? But if you're constantly eating, you're feeding your, bo your body again and again and again, guess what? You're putting more labor upon your temple, okay? That's why, you know, sometimes you may wake up tired as hell. Why? Because your body has been doing nothing but going at it, all right? Working overtime just to digest everything that you put inside it all right it says but they said we will not walk therein why because jake has lived in babylon to the extent that they think all right that eating breakfast lunches dinner is the way to live okay but that's not so verse 31 it says gluttony has been the death of many people avoid it and live longer all right point blank period okay there's been many studies that show that fasting prolongs people's life okay if you're constantly feeding your body your organs are working over time to the point that when you start living you know you start going up in ranks of age those vital organs like the liver the kidneys they're gonna start failing okay so, you know, that's pretty much 
all I had in store, Aki. I'm just start making smarter choices when you're at the grocery store, okay? Instead of getting those chips, those hot Cheetos, <laughs> grab the, the ones that are cooked in avocado oil, okay? There's a brand called Siete that um, an Issachar family made that was suffering from diabetes and that, matter of fact, let me look it up. Siete. Siete chips. Up right here. Oh, and they're gluten-free as well, right? So, you know, just make healthier choices. It may be a little pricey, but at the end of the day, it's going to work its benefits in the long run. Okay? And that's just one example, you know? Just switch up the way you eat. And when the lack of bread hits, we're going to be cool, calm, collected. While everyone else is fiending for that food, we're going to be chilling. Okay? So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash, double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word, and peace and salutations go out to the elect. And until next time, Shalom Akiyam.